Hey everybody, Nathan Nelson here. Welcome back to another episode of How I Got the Shot. Now this is gonna be a quick one. It's a one light setup that makes an image that looks exactly like this. Let's just get into it. So here we are in the studio and I'm running a simple one light setup. Now my main light is a Strobe Pro 8600 Pro and it's inside of a Profoto large deep white umbrella with a diffusion panel attached. And for fill, I'm using a collapsible V-flat from V-flat World. Now for my backdrop, I'm using a custom painted backdrop from Unique Backdrops. And I've said this before, if you guys are looking for a custom painted canvas backdrop, check out Unique Backdrops. They are absolutely beautiful. This is my Irving Penn edition and it is gorgeous. Just, I'll link them down below, check them out. Now for this portrait, the positioning of the key light is super important. It's essentially driving everything. And the way that the light is positioned is not from the front, but more a little bit from behind. So if the camera was here, I'm taking this picture and I've got my model facing off this way, my light, rather than being out in front and lighting everything on her face, I've actually got the light positioned a little bit behind her so that it's wrapping around and creating a lot of that shape that shadow, that texture, that detail, that interest. So if we move around to the back here, you can see that she's not actually positioned right in the middle of the modifier. She's actually positioned to the back of the modifier. So if she's standing here, the back of my modifier is about right here and the rest of the modifier is out front. And that light is wrapping around the model. It's that feathering effect that I use in pretty much all of my portrait work. It's just a really nice transition from the lights to the shadows and it just allows the light to travel across in a very flattering, very soft, pretty, interesting way. So this light is metered to F8 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 100. Now that means that my camera also needs to be set to F8 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 100 to gain that proper exposure. Now for the camera, I'm shooting on the Nikon Z6 Mark II and I've got my Nikon 85 millimeter F1.8 Z lens attached and I'm tethered into Capture One Pro. Now, when it comes to the fill light, where you position that V-flat matters a lot when it comes to the final outcome of the image. Now, the further that you place that V-flat away, the darker the shadows are going to become. So this is an image where the V-flat is roughly three feet away from the model. And as you can see, it's a little bit darker. Now, if I bring that V-flat in to about a foot away from the model, you can see it brings in a lot more of that shadow detail without losing that initial shaping from our main light. So again, it, it follows down into a, a personal preference. If you want the image to be a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic, move that V-flat away. If you want it to be a little bit softer, a little bit more subtle, bring it in closer. That's where I decided to go with these images, so that's what I'm going to showcase for the rest of this shoot. Now, where you place that V-flat or whatever reflector you're using, matters in terms of how it's reflecting the light. Now, a lot of people who are a little bit more unfamiliar with using reflectors, maybe they're new to them, they have a tendency to just slap that right down beside their subject and just kind of hope that it, it fills in the light where it's supposed to. But that's not really the way that it works. So again, if this is where my camera is and I'm the subject and my lighting is placed here, I want that V-flat to be kind of out to the front so that the light can hit the V-flat and bounce back in towards me. If I put that reflector directly behind my subject, the light can't travel through your subject to get to the reflector to come back. So you're essentially cutting off a lot of that light. Now, in some instances that might work well for you, but typically when I'm using V-flats, I like the light to be within eyesight of the reflector so that the reflector can catch that light and bring it back in on a more kind of soft, natural way. So now that we've seen how the fill works, this is some of the final images from this shoot. And so there we go, another episode of how I got the shot wrapped up in the books. Hopefully you guys can pick up something from this that you can use in your shoots going forward. Now, if you have any comments or questions, use the comments box down below. That's what it's there for. And as always, I appreciate you guys being here and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Cheers.